Happy New Year, everybody. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with that eight-box break of Bowman Draft Baseball. Pick your team 10 in the new year. Happy New Year to everybody. We've had a great breaking night to start off the year. Stacy, last spot mojo Phillies. There you go. Thanks to her. Thanks to everybody for getting into it. All right. I think we, this is our second to last case. We don't have very many left, boys and girls, so get into this while supplies last. Oh, I see. John is charging his phone. We're talking to John Samuelson just before this break started. We're just like, he's like, can't really chat because I'm watching on the Apple TV, but cleaning the man cave. And I was just like, well, you can chat on the YouTube app on your phone and watch on Apple TV. And then it's like, well, I'm charging my phone. That could pose a problem. All right. Let's get this squared away here. Remember, folks, there's two, four, six, eight right here. Um, paper base does not ship. Everyone knows that by now. Everything else does, of course. Three autos per jumbo box on this one. And so we'll breeze through the, uh, we'll breeze through the paper as quickly as possible and then Slow down a bit for the chrome. All right, good good luck, everyone. How was everyone's new year? This is a longer break, so we get to chit chat about random stuff a little bit more. Usually during breaks, I'm like, hey, let's try to keep the break or the the chat topics. If you're watching live, the chat conversation more more in tune with uh, the the sport that we are breaking. But listen, we got a lot of a lot of air time to fill on this break, so this should take about an hour. Oh, if you're watching on YouTube, the watching the replay on YouTube, that is, I'll do an auto recap at the end of this break, just FYI, because we're nice. That's our resolution this new year, be nicer. We are nice. Um, and once again, we do have a little bit of time uh, after this break, so jazbeescasebreaks.com has all of your fun. We'll, we'll be down to entertain another shorter break, maybe around the 30 minute range or less, which would include Bowman's Best Baseball, which is in single digits, maybe autographed jerseys, the last two boxes of those, Prime Racing, et cetera, et cetera. So check out jazbeescasebreaks.com. If you still have the itch to break, go for it. Otherwise, listen, folks, we're, we're back to our major holidays are gone, so are over, so we're back to our, uh, our seven night a week schedule. I'll be here this week through Saturday, Nick Jaspi. Sundays and Mondays, and then I'm back again on Tuesday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, has I think Manny Machado is supposed to make his decision this year? Has he made his decision? I don't know. What's been going on in baseball? Well, we'll we'll, we'll see. Um, so what did everyone do for the new year? So we'll breeze through this paper right here. Obviously, paper, chrome. Craig's asking if there's any Marlins. We are literally this many cars into the break. So no. Not yet. But you're just in time to watch the entire break to see if there's Marlins hits. Marlin? No. Jazz Chisholm to 250, purple paper. We'll set those aside and we'll uh, sleeve and top load those before they go out. So we'll obviously randomize these left and right as well. And our first hit is Lenny. Lenny Torres. I think so, Greg. I see you for Marlins. If you think you should have more teams, double check your orders on your account page. But yeah, I see you for Marlins here, though. This is pick your team 10. Okay, Cleveland Indians, that is for Gary. Gary with the tribe. There you go, Gary, on the board. So I, me and the pug, Bubba the pug, went to my friend's house in Orange County, my friend's girlfriend's house in Orange County. She's got a nice house down there, Newport Beach, and we hung out there, small little... Uh, 
dinner party kind of thing that kind of got out of we didn't I don't think any of us went to bed until like five in the morning. But she has a couple dogs, so the pug got to hang out with the two other dogs. That's for the Yankees. And so it was good times. Good times. So that's how I spent it. Then watch college football all all the next day. And that was that. It was pretty nice. Kip says his was good. The Ravens won. So that was great. Kip, do you think the Ravens are going to win this weekend? How do you feel about that? There's Thad Ward. Kip is a Ravens fan, of course. Rex is saying, I'm still waiting to see if the Giants are really after Hayward and Ian Happ. Not sure I want to lose them. Sure you do. Sure you do. Jason Hayward is a good defender, but he's getting paid way too much money. And Ian Happ is... Is, I don't know, is like a ceiling is Ben Zobris, maybe, who is good, but if you need to improve elsewhere, I think that's what you got to do. There's Brandon Davis to 402, speaking of the Cubs. So Kip is feeling good about his Ravens. He's, he thinks they're going to win. He remembers everyone picking the Chargers last time. Yeah, I mean, West Coast team go, playing an early game on the East Coast, that's going to be tough. Lamar, Lamar Jackson has only been improving. Baltimore defense seems legit. There's Greg Diekman, uh green paper to 99 for the A's, Eric Bailey. Um, but I wondered, I mean, does a second look at that Ravens defense, does that help the Chargers maybe unlock, unlock that defense? There's Travis Swaggerty, that swag though, refractor, autograph, Paul Coolwit with the Pirates. It's a great one there. I think 14th overall pick, big name from this draft class, 10th overall pick. There we go. And there's a redemption right there. And so that'll be our third autograph, the redemption right there. Who are the redemption? I think Jaron Kendall for the Dodgers is the redemption. There's Blaine Enlow, purple chrome 250. Anthony Siegler for the Anthony Siegler for the Yankees is a redemption. I think Grayson Rodriguez could be a redemption. Oh, Bryce Turang is a redemption. Some of these can be autographed too. All right, so behind Luke and Baker, you are due to receive a Chrome draft pick autograph refractor parallel of T. Tri Tristan Pompey. There you go. Greg nailed it. He is a oh Marlin. That's why Greg knows. There you go. That's what that's Greg's guess. There you go, Greg. Yes, you did hit. Canadian. Looks like he's been playing pretty well. And the older, uh, his older brother is Dalton Pompey. Nice. Autograph three. Right there. Oh, are there, are there no Dodger autographs in draft? I thought, there, I thought Jared Kendall, or am I confusing, is Super, is he in Super Jumbo? I don't know, I get, I get all these mixed up.
All right. Next box, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking at MLBTradeRumors.com. There are really not, there's not a lot going on here. I think a week or so ago, Twin signed Nelson Cruz. Oh, that Japanese player got signed. Mariners picked up um, Kikuchi, I think that's how you say it. UC Kikuchi. And he's going to earn about $43 million over the first three years of his contract. And then he can be extended and make the deal a seven-year, $109 million contract overall. And if they don't exercise that ex uh, extension, team team option, I guess, there's a player option that would just pay him $13 million. So that's in that'll be interesting to see. But at least four years are guaranteed, apparently, on that contract, three or four years. He's, he's uh, 27 years old. He's a little bit older than, say, Shoei Otani. The unique case with Shoei Otani is that Otani's much younger. So there you go. That'll be, be interesting to see how he turns out. I don't think he's going to be as electric as, as Otani or some other uh, Japanese players. Doesn't have that same hype, but could be great for a Mariners team rebuilding. All right, next one, another three autographs to go. Good luck, boys and girls. What else is happening here? Rays signed Charlie Morton. Cub signed Kendall Graveman. A signing Mike Fires. Nationals signing Anibal Sanchez. There's Nico Horner, 402 for the Cubs. Blue Jays signed Matt Shoemaker. Oh, right. Uh, this is kind of an interesting deal. Yankees and Troy Tulowitzki agree to a deal. What does everyone think about that? So that fills the Didi Gregorius spot. I don't think, I think Didi will be missing most of the season. Look at this. Nice. Sam Carlson for the Mariners. Speaking of the Mariners, one of one printing plate. John Samuelson with the M's. John, stop cleaning and do the train whistle with me. All aboard! Woo woo! There it is, nice printing plate. And here comes our first autograph. It's going to be for the Tampa Bay Rays. Nice. Three out of 71. That sparkle autograph. Shane McClanahan. Karen Paglio with the Rays. There you go, Karen. Nice. Late first round pick. So that's autograph number one of three. From this box, we'll keep track of it right there next to me. So Tula Whiskey, so Didi Gregorius, I think, is going to miss most of the season. I think he is still under a contract with the Yankees, maybe a, another year, something like that. But Tula Whiskey signing for depth, maybe, or they, or do they think he's actually going to play regularly? That's interesting, because I thought they were in on, I thought they were in on uh, Manny Machado. That seemed like the perfect. Space. I mean, I guess they could still get Manny Machado, but it'd be interesting to see how that works out. There's Hunter Green to 402, Reds. But obviously, I think people are still waiting for the big um, Manny Machado, Bryce Harper. Once those dominoes drop, then I think we'll see a little more action in the free agent window. Kayvon Jackson to 499. 
And our next autograph is... Wow. This time, it's live. It's alive. 106 out of 150, Tristan Pompey. It's another one for Greg. And the Marlenes. There you go, Greg. <laughs> Train as well, John's checking in. You're going to keep cleaning. All right. Yeah, unless there's another one. You got to check back in. Okay. Yankees may shop Andujar. Interesting. Alec Thomas for the Snakes to 150. So what would they move him for? Pitching, probably. Starting pitching? Because it's really just Luis Severino. CC Sabathia, maybe, and that's like that's Tanaka. That's kind of it, right? They could, you could use another front of the rotation kind of guy. Oh, John Tam says your family's watching the Masked Singer show. It's interesting. Um, I learned the other week that um, I guess that that was originally a Korean show like that was a really popular show in Korea out of 150 Brady Singer and Blaine Enlow reveals a Noah Taylor and John Tamerson saying, there's definitely an NFL player singing as a deer. The panel of judges is not good. Well, I think Ken Jong is on the show, right? I think there, that, that, there, there may be like the, the Korean connection right there. But I didn't realize that. I guess it makes sense. American Idol was a British show. All right, next box. Ken Jong's the only saving grace. He's pretty funny, Ken Jong. I don't know if I don't know if his comedy really aligns with mine, but he's a pretty smart dude. Jenny McCarthy's on the what? When has Jenny McCarthy been relevant? Isn't Jenny McCarthy? Isn't she an anti-vaccinator? I'm not, no, not down with that. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true, Rex. Japan does have some weird shows. Mr. Mike's daddy, Chris, what's going on? Yeah, vacation vacation time is over. I might take a short one in the spring, but yeah, in terms of the holidays, yeah, it's all over. We're back in action. But yeah, shows in Japan are pretty crazy. TV shows in Korea aren't so bad. I, I think there, there's a lot, it's a lot of variety show type stuff, but nothing too wacky. But um, but it is like just a lot of a lot of celebrities kind of getting involved in everything. I don't know what a Nicole Scherzing Scherzing bringer is. I've never heard that in my entire life. That's the first time I've heard it. How? It, why? Why is she relevant? <laughs> Um, Jesus Lazardo to four ninety nine. Oh, she's she she was on she was she's a pussycat doll singer. I see. And she used to date Nick Hexum, the lead singer of 
311. Tyler Frank. Interesting. Aren't there, isn't that like a troop, the Pussycat Doll Singers? Aren't, aren't they like 20 of them? Well, if the show, I'm sure if the show is entertaining this year and, and does okay, maybe they'll get better judges next season. For the tone of my voice, John Tennyson is like she really is nobody. I honestly have no. I mean, I'm not. I'm not being sarcastic. I've just never heard of her. I've heard of Mackenzie Gore to 250 purple chrome for the Padres. I've heard of Mackenzie Gore. I can tell you more about him. They got him in a trade with the Red Sox. It's one of their top prospects. There's uh, Juwan Harris to 150, paper. Joe, was Brady Singer the Royal that was accused of not signing his own cards? No. Oh, I don't know. Is he? There's Jason Schroeder. I know there was some 84 at 99 green chrome. No, I, I, I mean, maybe. I haven't heard any of that news. I think you're thinking of Colton Welker in some early set last year. Rockies kid who had like base autos and his refractor autos that were a few different signatures that like looked differently, but his agent has allegedly said that he was just trying out different autographs. I don't know why you would change them midstream, but in a single product, but... It's allegedly that guy. But I don't think Brady Singer is the is the dude that gave like his did the video of his you know giving his like signing bonus or whatever to his parents pay off all their debt that they accrued while driving him and his brother around for travel ball and whatnot. So he had like a kind of a viral video for that over the holidays, which is really good. It seemed very genuine, so I'm on board with that. Colton Welker, so you're thinking Colton Welker. I mean, it's it's hard to say if the, he was really not signing his own cards or, or whatever. Mason Denneberg, 74 out of 499. That's true. Yeah, you were close, John Samerson. And there's Griffin Roberts for the Cardinals. That'll be for Jason Cox and the Redbirds. So that's your third autograph of the box. Right, so the Astros, oh, sorry, I wasn't even, sent. Astros, Karen, you have the Astros in this one. And then of course, Jason Cox with the Cardinals and Tyler Frank went to the Rays, that's also for Karen. So two out of three for Karen P. There's Jeremiah Jackson to 150. And that's that. Next box.
All right, uh, after this box, we're halfway through the break, ladies and gentlemen. We're making some decent time here. I see a couple orders coming in from Dave Barros and Ricky Holbert. Like I said, we should have time to do another, say, 30-ish minute break after this. If not, don't worry, folks. We're, we're back in action. We're doing back to our seven night a week schedule. So we don't, can't do it tonight. No need to rush it. We'll do it tomorrow. Good luck, everybody. Wait, so how many uh, how many mass singers have been unveiled thus now? I'm curious about this show. <laughs> There's Nick Solak to four ninety nine. And speaking of the Royals, there's Chris Bubich going to Josh Pruce in KC. So how many singers are there? For, does anyone know? Who's been revealed? Has any, anyone been interesting? Can't be just one person to show, right? It doesn't fill a show. There's Cody Clemens, Rogers' kid, purple chromed 250. That's right. No Russian, I'm not Stalin. Hmm. I've made a small financial investment in the Lakers tonight. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, folks. Ted Long, purple paper to 250. And there's the next auto right there. And it's for the Blue Jays, refractor auto, 489 out of 499. Jordan Groshans. That's for Eric Bailey and the Bluebirds. Did they put Animal House on Netflix? I haven't seen that in ages. There's Durbin Feltman to 402. Oh, nice. Folks, if you're watching The Mass, Mass Singer, then don't look in the chat <laughs> because there'll be spoilers because I don't care that much. Uh, the first unmasked singer is Antonio Brown. What did he sing? Nice Jonathan India. Oh. Definitely got fooled there. He's saying, my prerogative dressed as a hippo. The costumes look pretty elaborate. All right. So how many more are there? How many more singers are there going to be? How many per sh How many are unmasked per show? There's Dave Barrows. Oh, is that India variation? 
Oh, that's why it was flipped around. So we'll set that aside. We'll have that sleeve and top loaded before it gets shipped out. Reds, Jeffrey with that variation, Jonathan India. And out of 59, Matt Mercer, gold paper. That's for the Snakes. That'll go to EA. Wait, so they're, they only unmask one per show? There's Josiah Gray. Autograph, Reds, Jeffrey. Hmm. When did Antonio Brown find time to do this? Was he busy playing football? They must have taped this over the summer. Unless he was doing it during the season. And just paper there. All right. Halfway through this break, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting there. All right. Next box. Wait, did he really? Wait, it's a live show? Huh. That's, that's interesting. I guess that makes sense. Otherwise, you have to... A lot of people keep quiet for a long time. No, I kind of wish he did. John Townsend was saying, like, he, he said it's a live show, and then he grabbed the mic and told Mike Tomlin he was a hater and called out Ben Roethlisberger. Lakers down by seven with two minutes left. Not a good, not a good NBA day for, for Joe. And try again tomorrow. We've got Trevor Steven to 499 Yankees. And the autograph is going to be a Cub. It's a Cole Rotor for Eric Bailey with the Cubbies. Flagrant one, I guess so.
Karen Vavra to 402 for the Rocks. Oh, I see a little bit of orange there. Paper, chrome, autograph. And a nice Brady Singer, orange, three out of 25, Bowman Sterling. There's more orange coming up too. Nice one for uh, Josh Pruce and the Royals. Hunter Green, orange to 25. That goes to the Reds. That'll be for Jeffrey. Ray Rice, what's going on, Adam? Uh, no, I'm not. I just, just haven't had time. There's, for the M's, Logan Gilbert. That's a nice one for the Mariners. Out of 499 for John Samuelson. No, I haven't had time to play the old Pokemon Go. Not, not that anyone plays that game anymore. It's for kids, but... Um, I think I was in... I played a lot in Vegas. But then I got back, and then things were super busy here. And then it was the weekend. Then I had to, like, unpack from Vegas. I didn't even have time to do that. Unpacked. Didn't really play much that day. And then was gone for like two solid days out of town with the pug for New Year's Eve and goofing off with him and my friends. We didn't have a chance to play there. There's Alec Hansen to 402 for the White Sox. And just didn't, just didn't really get around to it. But I think I'll be settling, settling back into a normal schedule. I think that'll surely include some more of that. Yeah, Orange County is, is a very odd world. So it is another world. I don't know if I could live there. It's very weird. Primetime is saying, are there any events happening in Vegas? What kind of events? I mean, there's always something happening in Vegas. There's Jeremy Ironman. Hobby events? Probably not. Oh, I don't know, actually. Not probably not. I just don't know. There's Tristan Houses for the Red Sox. That'll go to Stacy and the Bo Sox. Nice. That's our third auto of the box. Yeah, I don't know if the, of any hobby-related events in Las Vegas until until uh, Jaspi Fest. I don't know when that's going to be, but. We've been kicking around that idea. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Who knows? Maybe at least a meetup, right, John Samuelson? Yeah, maybe at least a meetup. Maybe we can work that out. And then maybe more a more formal event someday. All right, another box. Three more to go. Good luck, everyone. Get a block room at the Red Rock Casino? I could. Red Rock is nice. It's a little far from the Strip. Maybe people who are flying out to Vegas want some more traditional Vegas experience.
I was at one of the coast casinos, Sun Coast, I think. This is pretty nice. Lakers didn't do it. Hard Rock is super cheap now? Could do Hard Rock. If, if Hard Rock's super cheap now, then surely the Hooters Casino across the street is even cheaper than that. Oh, Suncoast. Isn't that South Point? The one that's way down south is South Point. I thought Suncoast was up northwest, closer to Red Rock. Right, maybe I'm confusing all of my coasts and... Souths and suns and whatnot. Cito Sanchez to four ninety nine paper for the Phillies. And we got more Blue Jays. Jordan Groshans to two fifty. Oh, no, I am right then. So Suncoast is closer to Red Rock, and South Point is the one way down south of the Strip, which I hear is pretty nice. That's what Colin Cowherd says. Colin Cowherd's a big proponent of, Sun, of South Point. He says he's got a sports book there. It's got a good casino there, some rooms, and he's just a grumpy old man. He's just like, and yeah, no kids. Nikki Lopez to 99, green chrome. Mike Sina, Siani, sorry, not Sina, Siani to 150. And what up, bro? Josh, bro. For the Yankees, Eric Bailey. Eric Bailey with the Yankees. Autograph two out of this box, two of three. Mitch Keller to 250, purple chrome. Helio Ramos to 402, big prospect for the Giants. Uh, Greg, this is box six, I think. Yeah, six, seven, and eight. And then we're done. And we got Ryan Rollison for the Rocks. Blue Wave Auto. Nice. That looks good. 94 out of 150. We got Jeff Goldberg with the Rockies. Nice. That's our third autograph of the box. Third and final autograph of the box. We got six more autos to go. Three and three. Maybe we'll find some parallels in here. Looks like there's like a blue down there somewhere. Maybe a surprise printing plate. Printing plate caught me off guard earlier. Uh, 
We got Jonathan India to 402. That's for Jeffrey and the Reds. All right, two boxes to go. EA looking for some ink for the Diamondbacks. He's just like all expansion teams are hitting except for the D-backs. I only still have six autographs to go, Eric. So maybe that maybe that expansion theme will continue. Yeah, Reds are doing pretty well in this break. Variations, parallels, ink. Jeremy, happy new year to you too. Jeremy S in the house. John Samuelson's thinking that we should go old school, stay at the Golden Nugget or Union Plaza. I'll bet we can find a, uh, a banquet room for a lot cheaper there. Forty-six out of ninety-nine. Cole Wynn, Green Paper. I don't know if the California Hotel still open. Horseshoe. No. Another Logan Gilbert. Yes. Two twenty-six out of two fifty. Purple Chrome on card auto for John Samuelson and the Mariners. Tice, what's going on? Well, I don't get overtime, Tice. <laughs> I get paid the same. Whether we go late or not. There's a question Rex is saying. What city will do you think will think the next expansion team will be? And what current team might get the boot? I think baseball's crazy enough into thinking that they're going to expand without moving a team. They're thinking I think they're thinking thirty two teams. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I think they're thinking thirty two. But I don't know. That's always a fun question to think about. What cities can sustain a baseball team? It's a very important question. A lot of demographic research that has gone into that. I think there's articles on the Hardball Times or something like that that has explored that pretty in depth. Um, I think Portland would be pretty great. John Samuelson is right. Portland's a good baseball town. There's a great uh, documentary on on um, on a, a independent league team in Portland called the Battered Bastards of Baseball. That's on uh, Netflix. That's a good baseball documentary if you guys want to watch one. I think I think Kurt Russell or something like that had some association with that team. The four ninety nine paper. I think um, Las Vegas. Speaking of Vegas, could be an option for baseball. Bryce Turang. I wasn't even paying attention. Bryce Turang for Rory and the Brew Crew. Rory on the board. Um, but I've heard Vegas being kicked around, Portland being kicked around. Um, yeah, Charlotte could be an interesting choice. I'm not sure about Nashville. I've heard Austin being kicked around as well. And obviously, teams like, uh, or all the leagues are always thinking of 
of expansion into international markets. So Cuba for baseball has been thrown around. There's Jorge Guzman, 402. Um, Puerto Rico has been kicked around as well. Jeremy S. saying, oh, possibly talk of the Rays moving to Orlando. I was going to say, I don't think they're going to add a third baseball team in Florida. But um, Rays to Orlando might work. I've heard people in Tampa Bay, like or people who are uh, have purchased from us before, we've, we've discussed Tampa Bay, what's wrong with baseball in Tampa Bay. They say the stadium is just in a weird spot of the city. Like it's kind of out of the way. Because of you know the size of the bay and everything, they say that the Buccaneers and the Tampa Bay Lightning play. They have stadiums near each other. They play at a different part of the city that's easier to get to. There's Sam Carlson. Um, I'll set that aside. That might have been a variation. Um, so they're saying that that that's why Tampa Bay is just not drawing as well as well as they could, even though TV ratings are doing pretty well. Local TV ratings are doing pretty well. So they just have to move them out of whatever area they're in and get them to an area that more people are willing to go to or get to. Or move them to Orlando. And kind of be in a more central part of the state. Here's Jeremy Ironman. It's our third autograph out of here. That'll go to Eric Bailey and the A's. I don't know if Buffalo is going to get a baseball team west anytime soon. Austin is going to get an MLS team. And so is Nashville, right? Nashville just got it. That's what EA is saying. Yeah, Major League Soccer has been expanding somewhat aggressively in recent years. Atlanta United had a very successful season. They won the MLS Cup, and there it's their just their first year. But the city has really, really taken to them. So, that's a good situation for MLS. I think for MLS, expanding into more markets probably good for them. Last box coming up. And I think kind of getting getting MLS not to be like a, a pre-retirement pit stop for international superstars, that would be nice. Or we don't want to turn into like feeder teams for like the big European clubs. But we'll see. All right, last box coming up. All right, last three autos of the break, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll do a quick recap of all the autographs at the end of the video after we do the randomizers for the left right Jeremy S. asking, Joe, is Andrew Wiggins a bust? That's a very good question. How many years has he been in the league now? He's been in the league for like, fourth. is this fourth or fifth year? All right, last box, three autographs to go. 
I think Andrew Wiggins definitely it's been four years in the league and he's like a was he a number one pick? I think his play is not commensurate with his draft position, which I guess you would say would be a bust. I think it's been long enough. Ethan Hankins to four ninety nine. I mean the talent is clearly there, but to become a professional in the NBA Nice Nick Madrigal to close things out. There you go. Autograph one of three. White Sox. That'll be for Stacy. There you go, Stace. Uh, but yeah, I think Andrew Wiggins is definitely reaching Bustville. Jimmy Butler was just extremely frustrated with Andrew Wiggins because he, I think he saw that the talent was clearly there when he was in Minnesota. But like he's not playing defense like the way he should for a man of his stature. You know, and just not working hard enough. And so there's that mental aspect of it where I think it's just not clicking. Maybe he's in a bad situation, but the talent should outweigh that. You know what I mean? So I, th I think he's getting dangerously close to Bustville. Jabari Parker, I got to give him a couple extra, a little bit of time because of because of those two major injuries he's had. So he's got to kind of work through that. We haven't seen Markel Fultz play, Eric Bailey. I can know if I, I don't know if I can call him a bust. There's a Dice Medina to 150. Like when it comes to injuries, like I I, I find it hard to to say players are bust when they've been dealing with major injuries. So Markel Fultz allegedly dealing with a major shoulder injury that's been keeping him out of basketball activity. Let's see him play 25, 30 minutes a night for you know half a season or three quarters of a season, and. Then let's see what we what, what what how we can assess him as fans. You know, now we're not scouts or anything like that, but just as fans, as people who watch a lot of hoops. There's Bo Bichette. Fultz's pride's injured. I mean, I don't know him. I I, I couldn't say. I, I know his situation's been handled a little weird. Ooh, what do we got here? Nice, Casey Mize, your number one overall pick. This last box for finishing strong, 166 out of 250. Tigers, that'll be for Karen Paglia and the Tigers. Nice one. Your class of 2018 autograph. Rex saying, I got a Luka Doncic Red Wave out of 25. I have a national VIP gold pack. Yeah, that's still a big card, even, even out of, even non-auto. Nice one, Rex. Yeah, that's the value in, in the hoops, boys and girls. Even non-autos. There's Alex Fayedo for the Tigers. Non-autos can be pretty pretty valuable. Anthony Bennett. Yeah, I mean, I guess he hasn't even seen... I mean, how he hasn't really played. I think injuries are a concern for him too, but... But Wiggins is getting there. You don't think Wiggins is a bust, Dennis? I think four years in the league is a pretty pretty solid time. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I can, can we call Greg Oden a bust? He hasn't really played too much, right? He had major injuries. He never should have been drafted. That was the that was the mistake. I don't know if you can blame him for getting drafted where he did. But I mean, I guess everyone has a different definition of what bust is. But bust to me is players who have gotten their chance, gotten their minutes, gotten their opportunities, and have just not performed commensurate with their draft position. There's Justin Dunn to 499 Mets, and I think someone like Wiggins, you know, has played pretty consistently. Um, and has not played up to whatever his his draft status is to Dennis bust to me is like horrible Wiggins is not horrible no he's not horrible but for where where was Wiggins drafted he's a top three pick I don't remember honestly but I mean you can't be saying that about a top three pick right that he's not horrible he's number one right yeah you don't draft number one guys that number one and and want him to be not horrible four years later. It's kind of bust to me. Serviceable, but that's not what you want for. But has Anthony Bennett even played? Andrew Wiggins has at least at least gotten minutes here and has just been 
not as impressive. I don't know if Anthony Bennett's even getting getting time. And there's Caden Grenier for the O's. That'll go to John Hyanga, John H with that one. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of the break. Let me do a quick randomizer, left-right randomizer for these recommended viewing cards. Sorry, EA. We'll get him for the next. Eric Bailey was taking all of the Eric hits. And point the finger at him. Um, no, we'll get him next time, EA. We got one more case of this left. All right, so let's grab everyone's names from EA all the way down to Mike Coons. And let's roll the dice. And let's randomize that list six and two eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. After eight times, name on top, Stacy, last bot, Mojo. Wait, no, sorry. This is, I'm, I don't know why I'm, I'm losing my mind, folks. We, there's no break credit attached to this. And left, right. Maybe I should call it a night. He's thinking like points. That'll be in the 2019 blooper video at the end of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Five, six, seven, and eight. Right side. There you go. Good night, everyone. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We'll see you next time.